Welcome to today's edition of the AII, watching stock news, deal tracker, and advancements in artificial intelligence. Good morning and welcome to today's special edition of the AII podcast and Investor Ideas. Today we're talking to Mr. Merrick Hemsa, IP and Partnership Consultant for Fintech Innovator Aptech Payments Corp, trading on the NASDAQ APCX, discussing the importance of patents in fintech and also talking about how AI and machine learning plays a role in the future. Well, good morning and thanks for joining us today on this podcast. For our listeners, can you talk about your IP background and how, when and how you got involved with Aptech? Thank you. Um, yeah, I got involved in IP back in 2004. I uh, wrote my first patents, and uh, yeah, Aptec, I got involved with them in 2000. Actually, before Aptec, it was, it was Transcendent 1 in 2006, which became Aptec subsequently. Since 2006, I would say. And, and what, what do you, your exact relationship, I know you're an IP consultant, what is your exact relationship with Aptec? Oh, so I, was, I helped write the fundamental patents, and I'm one of the founders. I was originally here when the company started, and we wrote some fundamental patents that, uh, you know, we want to take to market in a system and method. And I think a whole universe has been built around what the patents we have are on, and that's why we're here today. So in talking about that, how, how important are, are the, pat- the patents to fintech companies, and specifically how important is that to Aptech? Oh, absolutely. They're very important. IP will be the key differentiator as the fintech space continues to mature. Um, it, as you see, it's getting very crowded. Uh, domestically, it's a smaller market than globally, and there's, but um, unfortunately, there's more competitors in a, in, a, in a market that has less fish to go after. Uh, you know, as you know, unbankable in the United States is like 100 million, some estimates say, as low as 5 million. So it's a range. So it's called 40 million, but globally, you have almost 2 billion. You know, this former CEO, or CEO of PayPal was talking about that the other day. 2 billion unbankable worldwide. So look at the opportunity. Is it domestically or interna- you know, internationally? And right now, I think it's international. And what applications and payments specifically do you think that fintech will see or are important in the next four or five years? What, what do you think the future of it looks like? And, and would your patents apply? Oh, banking, absolutely. Far none will be the most important application in payments. You know, as brands, I call brands affinity groups, their customers call them, uh, you know, offer virtual accounts. I mean, you're seeing it happen with T-Mobile and Boost, and they're offering bank accounts because they want to, you know, compete. And at the end of the day, these payment networks, if you will, you know, are, are going to be born. And the only way to, you know, compete with the payment systems is banking because the last mile is really MasterCard and Visa, and that last 1% to 2%, the only way you can sidestep it, if you will, respectfully, and be you know, independent of that is, is be on, on the banking rail. Do a bank-to-bank transfer. There's no waiting time. It's real time. It's the Fed real time. I mean, it's, it's the future. And with all the buzz that's out there on AI and machine learning, can you talk about how that plays a role in fintech? And, and I know it mm. goes from simple to advanced, and, and how you see that moving forward in the future as well. AI is really, you know, it's, it's an overlay, right? So when these chat systems like our IP, that, which is two-way chat, that's a communication system between an enterprise and a cell phone. People do it all the time. You do it all the time. With text messaging, I'm sure you get an alert. Hey, your Citibank card is, is being charged here. Was that you? Reply yes or no. That's a two-way engagement. We, we patented that system and method. So it's not just about fintech. It's about communications. And, and building the communication sy- systems that drive fintech into the next world, and that really becomes with being that dial tone. We're the dial tone when it comes to communications on wireless and banking at the end of the day, and we combine that, and that's why banking will be the last mile, and that's what we're here to do, to build one network where it's a, it's a single ledger transaction between you and I, uh, and the money moves instantly. Like if you and I both banked at Bank of America, and we went in there and we moved the money, it happened instantly, whereas if you were at Wells Fargo and I'm at B of A, there's a, what we call a hop, and that hop is either in the form of a check a wire, or a debit, or a credit card, right? That takes time to settle. Well, we're talking about instant, real-time money, but that all comes in one place, one network, and that's, that's what commerce is about. One of the things I talked to Luke about in a previous podcast, and you just brought it up right now, is, is that all of these patents and companies that might be using your technology that represents um, potential revenue streams, and when you're talking about getting a text from your bank, we all get them, you know, was that you? So, all of those times, is that potential revenue for the company, or how does that work? Yeah, so, you know, it's interesting because our, our fundamental patents are two-way SMS, 
So what you see Twitter today or you see any communication systems over SMS, whether it's a two-factor authentication to get into your account or a, a PIN to authorize a wire, that's the t- core system is the dial tone. Any enterprise system to any cell phone can talk back and forth and we can store that data. That's our first and most important patent in my opinion. The text-to-pay patent, which text payments alone, $180 billion was transacted in text payments alone last year. What is our piece of that? I don't know. I, that's not my job to do that. Our strategy out of Austin will handle the IP. But the really fact is, if you take the combination of two-way communication systems and text to pay, and then our other patent, which is linked to phone. Have you ever got a link to your phone, like to download something, like Google Phone, yeah. Google yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have we have the patent on that. We wrote the patent on that. So now, when you take those three, which are text payments, two-way communications, linked to phones, you're talking about. Google Play Store, Apple iTunes, you're talking about every major carrier, all the banks are using it, and everyone's moving money this way. It's a whole universe. And we recently bought some patents. It was an acquisition through Hot Hand Wireless. I've known the guy actually for years. I couldn't believe we got his portfolio. This guy, and now we, Aptech, own this, which now our portfolio patent is 17 patents. We bought another, we got 14 of them. We have the patents on ordering something on your phone, and it shows up at your house. Whether you are the item getting picked up in an Uber car or you're delivering something from Amazon, we have patents that were already proven and won in court many times. Like literally the companies that I don't want to name and go into it, they paid them and they paid off these people and said, you, this is a troll. You're a patent troll. Just take this money and go away. Well, they, you know, if we come back with this entire system that involves the e-commerce and mobile payments, we own the universe with this, that IP. And we filed some new patents, which will just differentiate us between the 100 people that are in the pack today once we get the new patent that we file, it, you know, we're very, I'm pretty confident it'll happen. Uh, you know, I don't see why it wouldn't because the, the, the art, the, they call it, the, the patent was already approved prior. We're just adding a new whistle to it, right? And so when you invent a cup and you say, hey, I want to add a, a handle to it, you already have the patent on the handle of the cup. You just want to add a handle. So you go back to the patent office and you add something to it. So we hope that patent office sees it the way we do, and then that would differentiate us against all the very crowded space that you see is is happening here in the States, and, and we'll have the patented system in that, and they'll all have the license from us or give us some type of royalty. I don't know how Qualcomm did it, but that's certainly if anyone's listening out there, <laughs> uh, you know, that's kind of the strategy. So we'll be implementing a similar fashion. I hope that answers your questions. Just going back to AI, do you think that there's any shortcomings or drawbacks oh. in the future for, for how that plays a role in fintech? I know. Yeah, absolutely. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, AI, AI actually is an overlay. It's an overlay of intelligence for those communication systems. So everything that you do and behave and engage, it studies those engagements and allows responses to make chatbots and, you know, robots. At the end of the day, it's creating human interaction. I mean, you saw the deal with Nuance. Nuance recently got acquired. Nuance was the first company that originally SpeechWorks, and they were doing, like, voiceover IDR. Microsoft bought them recently for, like, $40 billion, and, and, they, and, and they're still going into AI. AI is just taking conversation scripts you could, and, and, uh, and reading them and then studying them and then deciding behavior based on what conversation was going on at the end of the day. That's what it is. It's predictability. And so you can add... You know, isn't that cool? Bring predictability in an unpredictable world. <laughs> Matt McConaughey's book he just wrote. He wrote Green Lights. I don't know if you guys read it. It's so awesome. I, I really enjoyed that book. But it's uh, it's fascinating to see how AI is going to revolutionize um, the speed of processing and thought and eliminate um, a lot of things as far as processes are concerned because it will automate them. And I think two-way chat systems, which are the basis of communications, uh, you know, in, in our eyes, see any enterprise. And I don't know if you could agree with me or not. Do you agree that enterprises, small, medium, you know, build their own software internally to handle their deals? Because it's never cookie cutter. You know, maybe QuickBooks doesn't work for you, or maybe this software, Salesforce, doesn't work for you. It's too expensive. But you had some custom IT guy build your little system for your – you're just some spa shop owner with 10 locations. I mean, is that fair to say that people build their own custom software for their, for their enterprise? Uh, a lot of the companies I've worked with, yes, absolutely. Right? And so think about this. Think about taking – what, they're, what they've done and creating new patents on what they have. So what we do is take their take, – they didn't even know they had a patented system and method, but they might, and we want to talk to these people, say, okay, you wrote this software to solve this purpose, and we're going to insert this two-way communication system inside there, and that is now new art, they call it, which is a new invention. And then they can apply to the patent office, so we, like Qualcomm, want people to use – our systems and methods in their solutions, and we want to help them create that new intellectual property, which increases the value of their company, actually. 
And, and going back to some of the things Luke said he, in one of his previous interviews, and I really liked what he said, that, you know, being first, how important that is. And, and I know doing some research on the fintech space, they said a lot of the banks were very behind and kind of late in the game. So from your perspective, how important is it that your company spent that many years, you know, building this IP portfolio and then being first in these applications? Absolutely critical. I mean, look, I like the way we've taken our steps because let me tell you, Walmart – raised $200 million to figure the fintech out. They lost all of it. They, they now went and subsequently acquired a bank for God knows how much. And the reality is they were doing it because they did money transfer services at Walmart. You're aware, right? They got charged for, uh, you know, a lot of people were, there's a lot of frauds and scams in the, in the P2P payment space, as you know. It happens with Zelle and all these places, and then people are getting their accounts drained. Walmart didn't really care because they just let it happen. They got fined like $20, $30 million by the uh, agency. They, I don't know which agency it was, governing board, but so they just went and bought a bank. I mean, so clearly they want to compete with Starbucks, and they are going to come out with their own bank. But my point is, we avoided losing $200 million, okay? That's how I look at it. And so we, uh, uh, watching them go through it, because we know the path and the direction that these brands are going to want to step away from banks. In fact, the banks need to embrace our technology to enable their customers to compete against themselves. Because if they don't, if the banks don't let the brands have the banking services, they're going to become a bank themselves, and the assets under management of that bank are going to go to another place. We want to help banks and brands, the tier two and tier three, there's thousands of them, keep their customers and assets under management. Jamie Dimon at Chase is scared about fintech because if one of his customers like Pete's Coffee or whoever they are says, I want to go become like Starbucks, why would they deposit their money at Chase? They're going to build their own bank. Starbucks has $2 billion in reserves on prepaid coffee on the card. Are you aware of this? No, I didn't know it was that amount. <laughs> yeah, it's one point six billion was the last number. One point seven. It's on their balance sheet. So, so there's value in aggregating assets under a balance sheet and building payment systems. And when you give, and so now Starbucks, unbeknownst to them, just built a payment system and they became a bank because now all this money on the gift cards is sitting there. Are you familiar with Starbucks? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> right, right. And, and and isn't it funny how you can't spend the money at anywhere else? It only can be spent at Starbucks. You can't spend it at Pete's Coffee. Yeah, and you get a lot of them for uh, gift cards for Christmas, definitely. Right. So what we would do is if Pete's Coffee was our client or Home Depot, we would build them the same payment system, but you can spend the money at Lowe's or Target. See the difference? And that's what banking yeah. does. And so being able to navigate and understand how to make money ubiquitous, how to solve all the problems, needs of frictionless uh, payments, but at the same time um, get the benefits and perks of a no MasterCard Visa situation, Right, Visa and Mastercard is not involved in that two billion dollars in payments. So the way, so the way uh, Starbucks looks at it is they instead of paying payments uh, two billion dollars, let's do the math: two billion times point zero zero five. So that's uh, that's ten million dollars fees that they saved from Mastercard and Visa because they kept that transaction on their ledger. So that's the financial decisions that brands need to make to think about how to implement banking transformation into their business. This is a conversation about banking transformation. And we like to uh, open that door with anyone who has time because we love to learn about them and solve uh, you know, their problems. Well, that's pretty exciting. I, I didn't really, even looking at your website and everything, didn't really understand a lot of the applications until this conversation. So I really thank you for that. And I think it will work for a lot of the listeners and investors as well. I think you really gave a great insight as to how this can really, as you said, become banking transformation. Right, and 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 the really to add to that is, is when I share with you the progression of an evolution of Starbucks Mobile Pay and then Walmart trying to become a bank. We are Starbucks plus Walmart because we want to enable the brands to offer bank accounts to their customers and aggregate the assets under management. Effectively, look, I've got a Chick Fil A gift card. I put ten dollars on it. I bought a Chick Fil A. What is the use of this thing? Because there's four dollars left, and I can't do anything with it. There's no utility except I got to put more money to get more chickens. I'm like, what is this? Give me some utility. So let's talk to the car dealerships out there who, who, who have customers who show up and say, I need, a, I need a loan for a car, but my FICO is no good. Well, don't worry about that. You got a paycheck? Well, why don't you directly deposit it here with me, and then I'll give you a better rate in exchange, right? Car dealer bank A, right? And then they're going to say, well, wonderful. Now you've got security because you got his paycheck, right? He can now debit and credit that account, like his utilities, bills, whatever, and then the balance that's left there, well, if he wants, he can push it to his, his traditional B of A account or Wells Fargo account. But at the end of the day, he's walking off that lot with the car, okay? And how does that benefit a car dealer? Imagine this. Imagine you own, you're a top software company. There's 140,000 car dealerships in America now. 
I guarantee you there's a software player out there who owns 20,000 of those customers. If you took 20,000 uh, dealerships, it's all 30,000. That's about a third, right? No, it's about a fifth. Is that a good number? Google it. Auto dealerships, 140,000 in America. I'm calling it. There's 30,000 of them, as, as, let's say, use the same software. And the average car dealership does 50 loans, all in-house, and they are, um, you know, the average customer makes $5,000 a month, and they have an average de- uh, ending balance every month of $1,000. You got me so far with all the mm-hmm. assumptions? Yeah, yeah. At the, at the end of one year, assuming each person got a four-year car note, in year one, that software company would have $18 billion under management, and then, and then in year two, it would be double. Year three, it would be triple. And by the fourth year, the first year, note retires. So what is it worth to a software company out there that's listening to aggregate all those assets for those car dealerships because you enabled, you became the credit union of the car dealerships, right? At the end of the day, you know, we're talking to events companies and groups that want to become the, the credit union of the bank for the event sector. Each sector is, is really an affinity group. And Jamie Dimon is worried because – his customers, like whoever they are, are going to want to go do what Starbucks is doing. They're going to want to do what Walmart's doing. And banking transformation is scaring people because it's like, wow, all these assets under deposit are going to go to another entity, and that entity is the brand. We're going to give the power to the brand. And let's talk, let's have the conversation about where we are in banking today, where we're going tomorrow, how to fill those gaps, and what's the first step and second step in that conversation with us. And let's take that journey. That's very exciting. I look forward to talking to you again in the future, especially as things roll out for AppTech and getting some more insight on on what's happening in the banking space. I have to assume, too, when you're talking about all this for a consumer, um, there's going to be a lot less fees. I mean, one of the biggest frustrations people have with banks is all the banking fees. Yeah. So did you first, did you understand that I did, I explain that you'd have 60 billion approximately under management. What can you do with 60 billion? Can you borrow against it and refinance your debt? Can you grow your locations? You see where I'm going with this? The banking yeah. concept? Right. And I've got a, I've got a, uh, uh, you know, that's what it is. So the question of fees, absolutely. It takes fees to zero. Banking takes fees to zero. Payments cost money. Banking is free because it's your money and we don't want to charge you to access it or deposit it, but if you move it, we'll take a small transaction. And these, these, these wallet-to-wallet transactions is where we see the money happening, and we see it happening overseas first and then looping back into the States. So you'll be seeing us soon um, putting our flag around the world. Very, very exciting. Okay, thank you, and, and let's do a follow-up very soon and maybe go into a little bit more depth on some of the, uh, the different applications and where you see things headed. Wonderful. I appreciate the, uh, the time. And that's it for today's AII. If you would like to be a guest or sponsor for this podcast, contact InvestorIdeas.com. Investor Ideas reminds all listeners to read our disclaimers and disclosures on the InvestorIdeas.com website. And this podcast is not an endorsement to buy products or services or securities. Investors are reminded all investment involves risk and possible loss of investment. To hear more InvestorIdeas.com podcasts, please visit InvestorIdeas.com slash audio and a reminder you can also hear our podcasts on apple podcasts audible spotify tune in stitcher spreaker.com iHeartRadio, google podcasts and most audio platforms available for disclosure purposes aptech payment corp is a paid featured fintech company on investor ideas for more information visit our disclosure page